this kit in the Beeb came in, um, we were still on one inch as the, broad, the main broadcast format, so all, all programs were on one inch, but um, location stuff started coming in on Beta SP, and we had one of these suites, very similar to this, actually with a BBE 900, it was just the predecessor the tape, of this one. Um, there's one down there, between the machines. So, this is Beta SP, so we've gone, We've gone from this to this in about 12 or 13 years, um, which is fairly typical for the industry, an exponential um, arrival of technology. So we're getting um, camera tapes coming from OBs or what have you. In my particular case, it was Ski Sunday. The uh, tapes would come back from the ski resort on a Friday or a Saturday morning, and we'd have to make the little start of the show which involved a lot of vision mixes. Now, doing that on one inch was impossible out in the big area that we had at Television Centre and they didn't want to pay for a suite. So we had one of these. So we had one, one tape with all the bits on it. So we wanted to mix to the other one. So we had to copy off, make copies of every alternate shot to another beta tape two beta players, one beta recorder, just like we have here. Point out what a mach beta machine is. This is a, this is a, which is the recorder? Nothing, I'm not taping it, is it? So this is a Betacam SP. Um, helical scan, as I, as, as was the Umatic actually, but of a much higher quality. It's a composite machine, composite video, analog machine, basically. Uh, first brought out by Sony in 80... Around 80, mid 80s, 84. Uh, yeah, mid 80s. Um, the first time BBC post-production used one in real anger was at the Calgary Olympics in 88. But, I say, I was using them on the little suite with, with an edit controller to make the little sequences with dissolves because, the, as Phil has explained, the edit controller can talk to the mixer via a, a 422 link, 